Hello traders, I have done a ton of research all day looking for the best possible on-chain indicators for the current market. And I'm proud to show you guys three of those indicators that I will fully explain and help you uh, through. Some of these are new, uh, some of these are not, but whether you've seen these or not, I think it's pretty good to have a refresher and to be able to access them. Uh, I'm also gonna be attaching links to all the indicators in the description below. Everything you see today is completely free. You can access it at any time on CryptoQuant. There's only, I think, a one day delay if you have a free account, which in mid to long term doesn't really mean much because we're looking at a much bigger set of data than just uh, you know the past 24 hours. All right, so let's start with the first one. So what you're looking at here is called the Bitcoin exchange stablecoins ratio. So what this is, is this is Bitcoin divided by all stablecoins held on the exchange. So all Bitcoin held on the exchange divided by all uh, stable coins on the exchange. So when this is very high, that basically means that a lot of people are holding Bitcoin and not many people are holding stable coins. Typically a great time to sell. And when this is, I'm gonna make sure you guys see, um, see all of this. And when this is low, that means that a lot of people are holding stable coins and not many people are holding Bitcoin. So typically the best opportunity to buy is to buy before others buy. And this indicator can really help you do that because uh, you can see just exactly when not many people are holding Bitcoin. A lot of people are in stable coins and that's really a good time to buy. Currently right now, it's at a very low value where the percentage actually went from, what is this, like 11%. Now it's only around 3%, which is insane. Um, that's really, really low. That's not many people holding Bitcoin, a lot of people holding uh, US dollars in stable coins. So if we back this up a little bit more even, I think this is just the last year, you can see some super cool patterns here. Um, I wanted to show the more recent because uh, it would the, more, uh, the past kind of drowns out the more recent, but this indicator has worked really well, uh, especially in the past. You can see here, in January 2020, almost everyone was holding Bitcoin. Uh, this is when Bitcoin rose in a mini bull run from about you know, 7,000, 6,000 to about 10,000. So pretty significant. And you can see just how many people are holding Bitcoin uh, right at this point. And then people, you know, right about here would have been a phenomenal time to, to have sold. Um, once you see this kind of trend, trend, trend change, because that's indicating that people are going from Bitcoin to stable coins and then price just tanked. And then a great buying opportunity occurred because look how low the ratio was. Uh, it was at about 7%. So this would have been a phenomenal time to buy and you kind of get it vice versa. Whenever this spikes up, a lot of people are holding Bitcoin. Not many people are holding stable coins. It's very bearish. Whenever it goes back down, it's typically a really good time to buy. Um, this indicator is really not I ideal for short term, but it's absolutely phenomenal for the medium and long term. So if you have a spot account, which is either all in Bitcoin, all in stable coins, or 50-50 you know, like I have, I think this is really gonna help you make your decisions toward, should I buy, should I sell, should I do nothing? And I think right now is a pretty phenomenal time to buy, even if we see a little bit more volatility. And uh, perfectly segued, a little bit of volatility is exactly what we're talking about in our next indicator. So you can use this indicator to time when to buy or sell in the market. But you need to factor in volatility as well uh, because you need to know, you know, should you expect a lot of downside against your, against your potential long position? And that's where we use the estimated leverage ratio. This is a ratio of how many people are holding futures contracts um, measured by open interest relative to how many of that coin are held in spot on that exchange. So basically on Bitcoin, let's say on Binance, but this works on all exchanges, Let's say not many people are actually holding Bitcoin um, at spot and a lot of people are in Bitcoin futures, long and short. That's a sign of people taking elevated risk. And what tends to happen when people take elevated risk? A lot of volatility. Now, if we look here, let's do first a little zoom out just to show you kind of the past of what this indicator has done. Again, this is not a price indicator. This is not gonna help you say, hey, are we gonna find tops and, and bottoms necessarily? This is gonna tell you how much risk should you expect, which is far more important than you might actually think. Um, at least it is for me. It's at an all-time high right now, which means that most traders are probably a little bit lower on cash, lower on spot, and higher on risk. 
So basically what these, what these two together are telling me the story of is a lot of people are in stable coins. A lot of those stable coins are being used for long and short futures positions instead of using uh, spot, instead of buying spot. So a lot of people have uh, futures positions on. And yeah, yeah let's look at the year today in the one year. You can just see what tends to happen when this gets to quite an elevated level is an insane amount of volatility. If you look here, uh, you know, this rises, this rises, rises, then insane volatility, you know. Uh, recently, volatility has been to the downside with, with extreme amounts at least. And then they all get flushed out. They rebuild, 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 and then you get this. Um, where the estimated leverage ratio went from about 0.27 or you know 27x to like 0.23. That's insane. An insane amount of deleveraging as people were forced out of their positions or they took um, they took off some risk, you know, or taking less risk. Now what we see is this is very very high again. So you might say, okay, so how can I use this uh, in conjunction with this? Well. If you believe that there's a lot of volatility, then it doesn't make sense. If, if you are bullish right now, it wouldn't really make sense to buy immediately. Uh, because with risk this high, setting bids out a little bit farther away from current price can work because there are so many traders that will probably get flushed out. Um, so there will probably be plenty of buying opportunities at, at lower prices because of just how many futures traders are, are here. Um, there, there's a lot, as you can see here. So this is just a really cool way to measure risk and, hey, should I buy or sell immediately or should I set my orders out a little bit farther because I'm expecting volatility? And yes, I'm expecting insane volatility and uh, buying options might not be a terrible idea right now. Now for the bonus indicator, uh, you don't have to use this or just have to check on it very rarely, but it's, it's awesome. I really like this one. This is how many Bitcoin are being sent from a cryptocurrency exchange to BlockFi. Uh, BlockFi is where you can lend your Bitcoin for a decent APR. People do this when they're very bullish on Bitcoin because they're sending it to somewhere that's paying them out, let's say, 6 or 7% on Bitcoin, probably less, maybe 5% or 4 You get 5% in, paid in Bitcoin to your uh, account on BlockFi. Now, if we look here, when are times when we've seen a lot of flow, a lot of uh, coins transfer from exchange to the, to the digital bank at market tops? That is really not that surprising. Uh, you know, you see it all over, of course, but typically when you see just a lot of people putting Bitcoin into, into lending, Bitcoin just tanks. That's because this represents just too much bullishness, especially when price was $60,000, no one wanted to sell. No one wanted to sell so bad that they were actually putting Bitcoin uh, to, to earn APR. Uh, and you can see just how much that happened right there. In one day, um, what is that, 5,157 Bitcoin were sent to BlockFi. So that this is a lot of people sending Bitcoin um, to BlockFi, which could seem bullish, you know, because some people might say, well, if you send it to BlockFi, you're removing it from the exchange, they can't sell it. They are just, uh, you know, it's like passive, which is typically pretty bullish. True, completely true, but I view this as a very bearish indicator on spikes. Why? because I think that the sentiment reflected is a little bit more powerful. Um, and when a lot of people start doing this, depositing Bitcoin onto BlockFi to try to earn APR, uh, that's a pretty scary sign, um, as you can see here. And here as well, like actually really well right there. It's kind of hard to see there, and I didn't do the best job of framing it, but price went up and then just as price was beginning to go down, everyone started depositing onto BlockFi uh, and then price just tanked. Too much bullishness leads to bearishness, as you know. And then it happened here as well, um, where price rose, people got really excited and just started putting a lot of Bitcoin into BlockFi and then price just fell right after that. Good news is not many people are doing that. It's, it's very few Bitcoin that are being sent to these um, digital asset banks, you know, like BlockFi to try to earn APR, which is another very bullish sign for me. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on Bitcoin. Um, I think that Obviously, we're going to get some wicks, uh, wicks to the low, and we're going to get some crazy volatility because of you know how much risk people are taking. But I think that overall, this might not be a terrible time to just, for me at least, to buy and then to earn APR from something like BlockFi um, or another site that I trust that I can just lend my Bitcoin out, um, and and to do that because not many people are really doing that right now.
So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, a quick recap of what we had talked about, just so that you guys walk away with everything useful that you need. So the first one is pretty good at picking tops and bottoms, or just good times to buy and good times to sell. When this is low, it's typically better to buy because a lot of people are holding US dollars and stable coins. Um, when it's high, a lot of people are holding Bitcoin, and that's not really the greatest sign for price going up if Bitcoin's held on in, in exchange. So this high, sell, you know, this low, buy. That's typically what I would do. Now, the second one is measuring risk. So how much volatility can we expect? And for advanced traders, should we be buying options? Um, you know, because we think implied volatility will, will rise. And right now, it looks like there's a lot of volatility coming coming soon, especially with this current kind of consolidation market around $30,000 that we have right now. I think it's I think we're about to see a fair amount of volatility, potentially to the downside with a lot of wicks. So, you know, stay safe. And then for the final one, this is just a fun one. But, you know, when we see a lot of people trying to earn APR by lending Bitcoin, typically that's a sign of people just being overly bullish thinking it's going to go to the moon and why not earn more Bitcoin. That's going to do it for this video. I hope that these three free, free indicators will help you. I narrowed down actually hundreds of different indicators on chain, and these were the three best ones I could find. If you agree or disagree, leave me a comment, and uh, yeah, hope this helps.